In this video, we're going to talk about setting up your development environment in a consistent way. We're going to focus on Windows in this video. There'll be a separate video for setting up an equivalent set of tooling on your Mac, if that's what you prefer. The first place we're going to start, and this is partially because it works um, so well on every platform, and because it is such an excellent editor, is with Visual Studio Code, which is the free um, integrated development environment from Microsoft, which uh, you can download at code.visualstudio.com slash download. So download the version for your platform. Go ahead and get that installed and launch it. In this newly installed um, environment that I'm working in on is Windows 10. You wanna make sure that you are on the latest version of Windows 10 which is uh, 1903, if I'm not mistaken, that, <clears throat> that you should be able to get through your Windows updater. And um, it's important to use that latest version because the Windows subsystem Linux integration is better. This environment hasn't been set up with WSL or Windows, Windows subsystem Linux yet. Uh, if we launch the terminal application here in VS Code, we'll see that our command uh, prompt is a PowerShell command prompt. So let's flip over to, um, to the web browser again for a moment. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna attempt to do is install WSL to support the Linux version of Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager which we can also use on the Mac and if you go to uh, brew.sh, which is the home page, you'll see that there is a uh, Linux and Windows subsystem for Linux link here on the home page. So we'll just want to follow that link. And Homebrew on Linux main page, there is a WSL link, which you can click on. And that actually takes you to this uh, about page at microsoft.com. On this page, you can see that they, the suggested options to, cho to choose your favorite Linux distribution from the Microsoft Store, and there's a link right here. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the Microsoft Store, and we're gonna, we're gonna install Ubuntu on our system. Okay, after the download completes, you wanna go ahead and launch that. Looks like we forgot to install WSL properly. Take that URL shortcut that they're suggesting we use. Take a look here, open PowerShell as administrator and run this command. So copy PowerShell run as administrator. Yes. Okay. Paste, run. Make sure that you catch that run as administrator tip. That was a little subtle. If you just do run PowerShell, it will, it will run as your user and you need to log in as an uh, elevated privilege. Do you want to restart the computer to complete the operation now? Yes. So we'll be right back. Okay, then now that everything's rebooted and we have WSL installed and we've already got our Linux distro selected, let's go take a look at the app in the store because it has a launch button here. So we'll kind of pick up where we left off. Try launching this right from the store. This time we have WSL installed. So let's see what happens. All right, well that took quite a long time to get all set up on my uh, my virtual machine here, which is running Windows. Um, now we're just gonna go ahead and continue with the setup. And 
In my case, I'm making this the same as my Windows environment is set up. They'll be the same. Well, alrighty then. So I'm going to make a new terminal here. Now, if you recall, this is PowerShell, but now that we've got WSL installed, we should be able to launch WSL from PowerShell. So let's go back to the browser, homebrew on Linux. We're going to try this command, copy, paste. Turn. So while this is installing, I'll just point out that one big advantage to going this route is then you're going to have the exact package manager on Mac if you're a cross-platform type of person as you will have on Windows. If you already know how to work with NPM and package managers and stuff on your own in your Windows environment, you don't have to follow this procedure. The main point is to get NPM installed. Okay, now it has this little warning right here. Let's flip back over to the web page and take a look at that. Follow the next steps to add Homebrew to your path and your Bash shell profile script, either home folder slash dot profile on Debian Ubuntu, which is us. Uh, and so that's what we want. So in attempt to make this kind of universal for everybody, they put um, a four line command that should pretty much uh, check which which environment your which environment you need and so if you basically just copy all four of those lines and paste and then hit return uh, now if we go so brew uh, is installed already up to date and now we can use all of the brew commands. Okay, let's just review the homebrew for Linux install instructions because there was a little bit more on that web page and we'll make sure we didn't miss anything. And take a look at, let's see, Debian or Ubuntu sudo apt-get. Let's just copy that. Yes. Hmm. So the locator isn't isn't locating stuff from apt. So we're gonna try this apt get update. Since this is uh, the first time anybody's ever tried to run apt get. Okay, now up arrow on the terminal, go back to the prior sudo apt get install, build essential, curl, file, and get. Yes. Okay, now we're not getting a bunch of 404s. Okay, so we're now that we ran through that extra step on the Homebrew install page, Homebrew for Linux, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead, clear our terminal again, brew install node. Okay, after a bunch of dependencies got taken care of, now it's actually able to install Node. And once this gets done, we'll just double check that that also included NPM, which is ultimately our goal. Well, that took a long time. I got bored of waiting, so I left and uh, now I'm back and it looks like it has completed installing Node. So let's up arrow and uh, See what happens when we do brew install npm. Do do do. All right. Looks like npm did install node, so you don't have to run that. 
Uh, so actually I could have probably also tested that with NPM minus V, which is the version check. Okay, that's uh, NPM version 6.10.3, node version 12.9.0. I think we are in pretty good shape here. We now have NPM installed on our machine. Before we end this video, let me give you a couple tips and tricks. First of all, whenever you come in and create a new terminal, it's going to um, create another terminal instance in here. So if I uh, just close this one and I, I say new terminal, I'm gonna end up with two terminals in there. So if you're done with a terminal, you can, uh, you can actually terminate it with this garbage can. What does the tooltip say? Kill terminal. But the most interesting thing, which may be of use to people that are going to be working primarily on Carafe, is <clears throat> if you launch the terminal as PowerShell, you're always going to have to type WSL to get the WSL terminal to come up. So there is this option to select default shell. And you'll notice that there's actually now, because we have WSL installed, three options. There's the traditional old um, system 32 command prompt. There's the new default or default default PowerShell. And now there's also this uh, WSL. So if we pick that as our default terminal and kill this one, now we make a new terminal, we're already going to be in WSL. So that's a good, probably a good default setting. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure why it happened to me, but I want to make sure that I point this out in case it happened to you. When I was uh, getting set up to show you that, I come back in here, new terminal, and write npm v. It's going to say, what command not found? That's because our all of our installed apps are not in our in our path. So if that happens to you, fear not. You can, uh, you can check in your uh, bash profile. It's tilde, which is your home folder, slash dot bash profile. That's a, uh, that's a file. So you can open that file up. In my case, it's blank right now. Um, so in order to fix that, the, the remedy, the easiest remedy is to go back to the homebrew page and run this command, these, this series of commands again. Copy come back over here and when I paste it'll run the first three and then the last one is ready to run when I hit return now it'll it has run all of those now if I up arrow past those four commands and look at my bash profile there's that eval that it's putting in my profile the main point is without a, uh, a path being without your path being updated um, None of these commands are going to work. So if I run npm v now, now that's giving what we expect. There's one other bash profile thing that you might want to check. If you just run brew doctor, assuming that your brew is running, your home brew is working like it, mine is now. Um, see how it says, it gives me that warning. Um, umask is currently set to 000. Directories created by Homebrew cannot be world writable. This issue can be resolved by adding umask002 to your bash profile. And then it gives you a command that you can uh, select, copy, paste, run. Now just to illustrate what that command does, I'll go back and open my bash profile. All it's doing is adding that line to, to my bash profile. And now if I exit and open a new terminal and run brew doctor, then you don't get, then you get rid of that error. In any case, those are a couple of gotchas to look out for. If they're not working, chances are your path is bent and you can just refer back to the homebrew page for the commands to uh, reestablish your bash profile so as far as what you're going to do with these new powers that will be the subject of another video